In today's video, we are going to talk about customizing the purchase order form and customizing the printed report that prints out when you print a purchase order. As you can see, I'm already logged into Track It. I'm going to click on Add New Purchase Order just so you can see the default form that comes with the system. In this video, we're going to pick a custom field and we're going to call it quote number or reference number, and we're going to add that field to this purchase order. So I'm going to click on the menu in the top left and then click on Configuration. Then I'm going to click on Form Definitions here on the left. Then I'm going to click on Form Customization. And first, I'm going to click on Primary Application Forms. We'll go over the Assigned Forms to Groups here in a moment. So under Primary Application Forms, you'll see a list of all the forms that are in our system here already. So I need to create a custom purchase order form. You'll notice if I click on the system form and try to edit that form, it will not let me because it will not let you edit the system forms. So I'm going to add a new form by clicking New. I'm going to select the purchase order. And I'm going to copy from the current purchase order. I'm going to give this a name. Let's just call it PO now for purchase order. And you can give it a description. Then you click Save. And the form customization tool will open up in another browser tab. Now you can see this is the purchase order form that we were looking at just a moment ago inside Track It, except now we're in edit mode. So if I click on these fields or objects, you'll notice they get highlighted and I can move them around, I can delete them, and I can customize this however I see fit. So for today, I want to add this quote number or reference number to my purchase order form. So the first thing I'm going to do is look over here and see what kind of custom fields I have to choose from. And I see here I've got some custom dates. I see I've got custom integers. That's probably the one I'm going to use. Custom number is going to allow me to use decimals. Text is going to allow text. So I guess if I have reference numbers that include numbers and text, I should probably use a text field here just to make sure that I can enter whatever I need. For this example here, I'm going to go ahead and select custom text one. So I click on it one time and I can release the mouse button then. And I see it says drop me. So I'm going to go ahead and click here where I want to drop the field. So now the field is on my form. I don't love the placement of that. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make some room for this thing. So I'm going to make the additional information smaller. I can move that down. Then I'm going to grab this box here and make it bigger. And then I'm going to grab my custom text field. So I've kind of got it where I want it now here. But notice that I still can't read this very well. And you'll notice that if I look down in my properties down here in the bottom right for this field, it's called custom text, which I'm also going to have to change. But it's also marked as a dark color scheme. So I'm going to change this to light. And then I'm going to press Enter to make sure it takes my change. Then I'm going to come into here and I'm going to say, I want to change this field name on the main purchase order screen as well as within anywhere in the purchase order module. So that means I need to change the field name here. So I'm going to call it, let's go with quote number. Some people might call it quote number. Some people might call it reference number. I'm going to press enter to make sure it accepts that change. Then I'm going to come down here and you'll notice that the name hasn't changed on the purchase order form yet. And that's because I haven't changed the label text that's appearing in this form. So I'm going to make the label text exactly the same. Press enter. Now notice that the field is actually called quote number on my screen. And you'll notice that in the purchase order module where that field is displayed in other places, it'll be called quote number as well. So now I've got my field on the screen and it's in a decent spot here and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save right here to save this purchase order form. You'll get a message here that it says it's been saved successfully. And you can go ahead and close the form editor. Now I'm back to my primary application form screen. You'll notice that PO is my new form that's listed in here. I'm going to click on go back. I'm going to click on form customization again. And I'm going to say assign forms to groups. If you're familiar with our groups concept here, you'll notice that you can make different groups of help desk technicians in your track it installation. So I have two groups. I have the help desk group and the system administration group. In the application here, you can create different forms for each group. So right now, I can check and see who I'm logged in as. I'm logged in as administrator, and I'm in the system administration group. 
So for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and change the default purchase order form for the system administration group so you'll see the change in action. So I'm going to come down here where it says purchase order and notice the purchase order default purchase order form is currently selected. So I'm going to click this drop down and I'm going to select PO because that's my custom one that I just made. And then I'm going to click save in the top right. And now if I come up to my menu and I click add new purchase order, So notice that my quote number is now on my purchase order form. And it's important to note that I use the text type field for this. So I can put in numbers or letters or symbols or just about anything in here, punctuation, because I used a text field. So any kind of reference number that I have, I can go ahead and enter that in here. And the purchase order number, I'm going to give that a number as well, one, two, three. I'm going to enter a requester because that's a required field. And I'm going to go ahead and just save this purchase order. So now if I come over here and I go to the purchase order module, you'll see this one new purchase order that we've entered. I also want to show you how I can customize the columns that show up here in the purchase order section. I can scroll down here now. And notice that I've got a field called quote number. I can check that, hit apply, and you'll notice over here on the right now, the quote number has been added to my list. So I can customize this view. I can pull this over here stretch it out a little bit to, so I can make sure I see the whole thing. I don't have that many purchase orders, so I'm going to remove the grouping here just to make it easy. And so there's my new quote number here. And now so I don't lose my changes to this view, I'm going to click on Save Current View As, and I'm going to call it New All POs. Now, we have our quote number on our purchase order, but if we come in our purchase order and we click this Print button, it's going to print out the old purchase order without the quote number on it. So now we need to go and add the quote number field to our purchase order. So we're going to come over here to the menu. And we're going to click on reports. And you're going to notice the reports are organized into modules. If you watch the custom reports video, you'll learn more about that. But the print preview section here is the section that holds all the reports that print out when you print something from one of the forms. So you'll notice there's a purchase order report. We'll click on that and again notice I can't modify a system one so I'm going to click on the action menu here and say copy. I now have this purchase order print report copy so I'm going to select that one click on edit. I can change this report title if I would like so I can say custom PO report. I don't want to change the data source because I'm using purchase order data. I'm going to go ahead and click design report. Now this report is going to open up in the report editor So I have to decide where I want to put this quote number now on my report. I think I'm just going to put the quote number right here under status. You could really place it anywhere you like, but that's where I'm going to put it. I'm going to go ahead and select the, the vendor information and shipping and billing information labels and move those down a little bit to give me some more room. Then I'm going to come over here to the right and you'll notice that this database container looking icon on the menu on the right. If you hover over it, it says field list. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to open my track at data source. I'm going to open my purchase order. And I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to look for the field that's called quote number because that's the name of the field now because we changed it earlier. So there it is, quote number. So I'm going to click on this and now I'm going to click on this and hold and drag it over here onto my report. Drop it right here in line with the status column. And now all I need to do is add a label next to this. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit to make sure I get the same fonts and same look and everything. I'm going to click on the status label here. And I'm going to click on the copy button at the top. Then I'm going to click just below status in this blank area here and click on my paste button. And sometimes the paste will do this kind of thing. It'll just kind of toss the field in there, but you could see it because it actually selects it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that drag it over here. I'm going to come back over and select the gear icon over here. And you'll notice that this status field is selected and the text is status. So I'm going to go ahead and change that and call it quote number. I'm going to hit enter. And you'll notice that quote number appears. Now I'm going to click on save. And now I've created my custom report. I'm going to go ahead and close the report designer. And now there's one more step to make this accessible from the PO. 
we're going to go back to our menu, back to our configuration, back to our form definitions, and back to our primary application forms. And we're going to go back into our custom PO here, hit edit again. And when the form designer comes up, we're going to actually click on this little printer icon. And when I click on that, you'll notice the properties at the bottom right here show which report is going to be printed. So I'm going to click on this little drop down for print preview report, and I'm going to select custom PO report because that's the custom one that I just created. I'm going to hit enter to make sure we get that change saved in there. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And when I get my confirmation message, I know it's been saved, and I'm going to close my form editor. Now I'm going to come back into track it. I'm going to close these other POs that I had open before because those were using the old form. And now I'm going to go back to the purchasing module. And I'm going to reopen my purchase order number 123 here. And when I click on my print button, I should get my new report that contains my quote number field. And there you go. It's purchase order 123. And there's my quote number field. So from here, I can actually print it, and I can save it off as some other file format for emailing, you know, PDF or something like that if I'd like. And so that is how you add a custom field to the purchase order and to the purchase order report. For more videos in this training series, you can visit our documentation site at docs.bmc.com. If you forget where the documentation is, you can always click the help link in the upper right-hand corner and sidetrack it. Some other useful resources are the Trackit community, where you can talk with other Trackit users and support representatives about how to get the most out of your product. You can reach that site at community.trackit.com. You can also reach our technical support directly by visiting support.trackit.com. And for general product information, you can always visit trackit.com. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video has been helpful to you.